So today we're looking at the underused weapon mods of Eternal and trying to figure out, are they able to be saved? Can they be useful? So our first step is the micro missiles and they really do get o overshone by the precision bolt a lot. So let's, let's take a look at those. Now, one really interesting thing I want to show you about these micro missiles is the Doom Hunter, right? So let's give ourselves full ammo and do this experiment out in the middle of the open here. So I'm going to spawn a Doom Hunter and I want to show you. See his big shield right here and see his sled? We're just going to completely destroy him with the sled with these micro missiles and see just how long it takes. So about 72 ammo, give or take. And let's go ahead and give ourselves another Doom Hunter and go to his shield. Wait a minute, this is stupid. We're supposed to have plasma to break this shield. What am I doing? Oh, wait. So you mean to tell me that these micro missiles have the same effect if you do a Doom Hunter sled versus a Doom Hunter shield? What? Okay, hold on just a second. We need to do something else with these things. All right, we're gonna take down the imp and then we're just gonna use the boosted missiles. And sure enough, it's a little bit less. It's about 20 ammo less. It's not that big of a deal, but it's really interesting to see how they are useful here. Let's talk about possessed enemies. So when we come up to a Baron, we can delete him with micro missiles, but how long will it take? So this one's pretty tanky. He's got a ton of HP, 7,000, and it takes almost our whole arsenal. Well, let's take a look at the possessed Baron and see how he fares against these micro missiles here. Now, as you can see, it's probably going to not be able to finish him in one clip, right? Well, you would be correct. But how much does it take? Let's try it again and see. Not too bad. So while the micro missiles may not be the best option for the possessed enemies, they work pretty well and I like to use them myself. And then we find out that using these micro missiles on the Doom Hunter is actually decent off the sled. The only the hardest part is being able to hit them when all they're moving around. You know, lock on is just so much nicer as you can see here. Well, let's try some other enemies too with the micro missiles. Now, if you're not a quick switching fiend, if you really don't care about it, these could be a good use. They do burn up a lot of ammo very fast. At least they do have their charging ability that really shreds through enemies pretty quickly. Uh, I think really, oh man, if Precision Bolt didn't exist, I think micro missiles really would get more love than they do. But it's hard because PB is so good and ingrained in the playstyle of 90% well, of the people here. So when we really take a look at these micro missiles, let's go ahead and spawn in an arch file and see what we can do against him. He takes a minute to do, and really it's tough to really pin him down unless we have that ice bomb. So really, can the micro missiles be saved? I really think precision bolt is the viable option, is the way to go. But if you don't like quick switching, they are a decent option for you. Okay, so let's get a little mobile turret comparison in here. Oh man, this gun, it's so thick and beefy and I love it. Honestly, man, if I had to choose between it and MM, you know, we gotta do we gotta do another test here. Alright, so let's check this out. Let's take a bear in here. The codex says that all the knight classes are faltered more easily by the chain gun. Well, mobile turret, chain gun, all the same, right? I believe this is a callback to the classic Doom pain chance. This is when you use the chain gun repeatedly on an enemy and it faltered them, well, pain chance, and really struck them back in classic. And the cool part is how it stands out in Eternal and really has a similar effect to call back. Now again, if you're not a quick switcher, then yeah, mobile turret might be good for you. The chain gun shield and the chain gun itself, it has a damage per second of around 800, which is nice, right? Well, I mean, I guess it's okay, but when you look at the mobile turret, we're looking at closer to 1200. That's quite a percentage increase between these two guns here, right? Now, micro missiles on the Doom Hunter was closer to 2000 or 1500, so it still kind of wins the fight in that regard, but let's look at the Dread Knight here. If you're, like I said, if you're not a quick switcher, this thing really does decimate enemies. But the real question is, does it hold up versus quick switching? Is it really something that you could just do a lock on burst instead? That may be a discussion for a lock on burst if it's overpowered. But the whole thing with mobile turret, it's decent. It's really not that bad, especially since it has the strength of the knight class. You know what? Let's take a look at another weapon here. You know we had to do it the full auto. Does this thing shred or does it suck? Let's take a look here. Now, it really depends on how you want to use this thing. Again, if you're not a big quick switcher as the previous weapons here, it can be pretty good. But a lot of people that I've seen use this, use it as a finisher. I know Mayo is a big proponent of that and he has a lot of expertise with this mod. So in that case, it would be an accessory. You would say, take your quick switching or 
finish them off with full auto, take the shells, and then move on. Of course, that was maybe not a good example of it. That was a little better one, and I got my six shells back. Damage-wise, it's just tough because, really, you're comparing this with the Super Shotgun. At least most people that I've seen, they do that. So when we take a look at the Super Shotgun, we just go right up, and it does so much damage, up to 1,600. It's just amazing. And then you have the full auto, just doesn't feel like it keeps up. Now, it did get that buff recently, which is very nice to have. You know, without the zoom in, you know, cyber zoom in a little bit, but the power, the wind down, just everything about it. Now, I think full auto you know, really stands out to people who, they quick switch, sure, but they like to integrate different things in their combos. You know, they might like to do, say, another thing we'll be talking about in just a second, a remote detonation, come in with full auto, just really depends on how those combos work. Is this a good mod? If you can incorporate it well, if you want your ammo back, I can see how people would like it. Me personally, I don't really tend to use it that much because I like these stickies, but hey, full auto, it's all right. Although I will say, I have to go with stickies, man. Because hey, can you do this with full auto right here? Check it out. You know our next stop is talking about the microwave beam. Yes, it is self. Really, I think when it first came out, people just did the constant stream like this, and then they wondered, hey, Doom Eternal is a fast moving game. Look, I'm locking myself down and I'm getting beaten up. This microwave beam mod sucks. And they might even freeze them, but the whole point behind it was you're standing, look how funny that looked, you're standing still and you are just opening yourself up to a lot of pain. So now what people have come to find out is that you lock them in just for a second, do a quick switching combo off on them, and the purpose of this mod was not as it was supposed to be at the start. We thought it would be lockdown when it's really just a quick stun. Now, of course, when you have a certain other enemy in the battlefield, like a spirit, well, that changes things up and you really do need it. Now, there definitely is utility in the mod. You can do things like this if you want to. However, that's very situational. And I think that's, that's a key point about the microwave is that it is a situational mod. You have to find when to use it as with everything else. You can do the microwave into blood punch. And even on the Samur fight, you can do the Marauder Dog. <laughs> have you seen that? It's just a really nice weapon mod if you use it right, but I think for me it's just too situational and I much prefer having Heat Blast because it has the falter with the single pip, not on spirited enemies of course. Now, well, you know, we do have to have the microwave to finish the game, so it can't be too too bad, right? So we know the microwave is good for what it's worth, yes, but what about the remote detonation? Yes, the biggest thing here, this was such an awesome gun in 2016, right? But with the Eternal, it just didn't seem as powerful. With 2016, the Mastery, when you shot the rocket, even if you made a direct hit, you would still get that extra damage from it, which was pretty busted, since, you know, that's two rockets right there. But the thing about this one is, it's not so much the raw damage output. Yes, people pick on remote detonation, like, oh, you're not even hitting your target and you still want to get damage in, so you detonate. No, it's the falter system that is so, so prevalent in Eternal. 2016, yeah, sure, there were falters, but just look at this. Look how valuable it is. You know, I know there's a whole hard falter, soft falter thing, but just to be able to take your enemy and say, hey, you know what? You stop just for a second. I'm going to go in for a blood punch, and that's the value. I really think if lock-on burst wasn't as prevalent, wasn't as so dang powerful, we would probably see more of the remote detonation. Would it be used as heavily? No, I still think that lock-on is probably going to reign supreme unless it was really really weakened and the remote detonation the falters it's just like why do the falter whenever you can just delete them with lock on burst so now we have to figure out is this a problem with lob or with remote debt if you're a falter heavy playstyle type of person you're going to love remote debt it's going to be for you completely so i can totally understand and respect that is it one of the mods that you're going to see in the high level speed running and super top level challenge running yeah, I don't really see that one that much there. But if you want to just have a fun time with Eternal and come in with some sweet combos and practice it a lot and get good with it, you want to have fun with it and you want to do pretty well. I think I like Lock On, but hey, there are remote detonation fans and they use it well. When it comes to the Ballista, it's really hard to say. The R Ballist, which is not quite the same as 2016's Siege Mode, is nice. It is actually a really good mod. It's so hard to say because both Ballista mods get a lot of love. And they really at first didn't because the Destroyer Blade at first was the one that everybody said would suck and it actually rocks. 
However, the Arbalest, I cannot really say anything bad about it because, hey, it's a nice mod. It's mostly for the flying enemies, sure, but hey, you gotta at least use it a little bit, even if it's not super OP like the lock-on burst, right? You know we had to do it. The Unmaker. Oh, man. The thing about the Unmaker is, here's where people get it, and here's what happens, though. They go in and they burn all their ammo up right at the start like that, and then they say, well, the BFG is more efficient. Yeah, it is. I do think it's more viable to send something across the room and wipe out the whole arena, except for some of the super heavies. There are more efficient ammo ways, I think, to be able to do this. So let's just give ourselves some infinite ammo and try out the Unmaker, right? It's not the same because, well, you have actually finite ammo. But the biggest thing I've seen people say is that it's a finisher. You go, you start your combo, you do everything, and then you top it off with the Unmaker. Me, personally, I can't justify the BFG ammo usage, even as a finisher. I really feel like that there is a more efficient way to deal with things and just a better way all around to handle the enemies. However, some people like it. They have success. They don't want to use the super overpowered BFG, so they go to the Unmaker. They use it as a finisher. They put it in combos, and they make it work. It does take less ammo for a super heavy like a Baron or Tyrant. It's true. You can take out a few of them in the span of one BFG for the 30 cells. But, man, this gun right here is just so dang powerful. So, which one do you agree with, or do you think this list is crazy? Comment below, let me know. Check out the next video here on Quick Swapping. I'm Austin. Thanks for watching.